Today we are happy to be here to wish with Jessica Price to true 20 series street in Lowell, Arkansas. And today we will open our service with Lady Irina, who will be uh, reading our scripture and immediately following the scripture. I will be doing the prayer and going into uh, the message for the day. Scripture reading today comes from the 91th number of Psalms. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snares of the fowls and from the northern pestilence. He shall cover thou. He shall cover thee with thy feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust in him. Shall be thy shield and thy book. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrows that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come not of thee. Thank the Lord for the reading of his blessed word. Let us pray. Great Father, we thank you today for allowing us to be in your presence. Again, we thank you for all your blessings that you have bestowed upon us. For we know that you are a good God. We ask your blessing upon all the saints. Yes. God, we know that you can bless. Those that are sick, those that are afflicted, those that are burdened, those that are troubled. Lord, we ask your blessing upon them. Lord, continue to bless us as we pray for our, our nation, as we pray for each other. Yes. Let your blessing continue to be upon us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Today, we are so thankful for God blessing us to share a word with you all. This particular day, we thank God for his blessing that's allowing us another opportunity to be in his presence. Today, we will be talking from uh, a very, very familiar scripture that we will be, we'll be reading from the St. John, the fifth chapter, first. Uh, through the ninth verse. As it read, and this, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew, Tom Bethesda, having five portions. And these lay great multitude of important folk, of blind, Halt, well, waiting for the moving of the water. For the angel went out at a certain time, certain season, and the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been. Now a long time in that case, he said unto to him, Would thou be made whole? Then the poor man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is struck to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down on the pole. Jesus said unto him, Ride, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the same. Today's text, we're going to talk about the miracle at Bethesda and the conflict and confusion that took place when leaving Bethesda. Today, we read a lot about the miracle that at Bethesda and what take, taking place and what 
have. Therefore, on today, I'd like to just talk about the, the miracle and also the criticism. Many times we think about how blessed we are about miracles. And today, we are talking about who look at this. We see Jesus went out and as he went out by the pool to Jerusalem, there was many people that laid there and they laid there and as they laid there, Jesus saw the condition. Search a sad condition. Many of them was blind. Many were halt. Many was crippled. And they just lay there waiting for the trouble of the wild. Because an angel went out and at certain season troubled the wild. And when the angel troubled the wild, who ever stepped in first was healed of that infirmity. So this was a great day for the people that were at the pool, but they were just waiting for the angel to come down and trouble the body to be healed. But one thing they didn't realize on this particular day was that the healer was walking among the great healer himself, Jesus Christ. As he walked through the people, as he looked at the people, he would move with compassion. As he would move with compassion, he began to talk to some of the people. But one particular man caught his attention. This man was there. He was brought there every time the water was struck. He was brought there. He was being brought there. He was laid by the pool. And when he began to talk to Jesus, Jesus began to question him. And he began to tell Jesus, every time I come here, when the water is from, I want to get in the pool. I want to be healed. But I can't get off this uh, cart. I can't get off this bed by myself. Whatever the water is trouble, same thing, everybody steps down in front of me. No one takes the time to help me get in the water. That old saying that I used to hear years ago, which should be among saints. That saying was self-preservation is the first law of nature. Saying you take yourself first, and if nobody else gets taken care of, then you have took care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Seemed like it was the same thing that was happening at the pool. Was anyone concerned about this man that was laying on the bed, could not get up himself, could not uh, get into the water. But every time, every time he went to step in the water, someone would step in front of him. So the question was, Coming from Jesus, do you believe that you can be healed? And the man began to look at Jesus, and as he looked at Jesus, Jesus immediately said, Get up off your bed and walk. The man immediately got off his bed, started walking. Not only was he able to walk, he began to carry his bed. And as he carried his bed, Hear the criticism that, that followed. As he carried his bed, group of people attacked him, saying, you know that today is the Sabbath day. You should be carrying your bed. You don't have to do anything like this on the Sabbath day. The man continued carrying his bed. They wanted to know who told him to do what he was doing. But I want to let you know today that when Jesus healed you, no matter what day it is, or what hour it is, when he heals you, you are healed, and you shall be rejoicing. And to those that were not rejoicing with him, Amen. they should have been rejoicing. Yeah. So today, as I'm 
salvation, the miracle, and the conflict that happened at the family. Man had walked 30 years, began to walk, someone was criticizing him. But the man didn't let that bother him, he just kept carrying his baby. So today, by our words, as I get ready to close, whenever the Lord do something for you, you should be thankful, you should be rejoicing. No matter who criticizes, no matter, no matter who talks to and said, you shouldn't be done this and that. But this man knew for 38 years he had laid on his feet. No one to help him. No one to wait on him. He had to be carried to the pool. But Satan is one to carry him to the pool. Then take the time to help him. Uh, get into the pool. I've always been an aggressive type person. I'll say sometimes I probably would have rolled off that place, tried to roll into that pool. Some kind of way or another, or else crawl to the pool. I've done something to get in there. Man, man. But one thing about it, didn't anyone try to help? But when he was healed, they began to criticize. When the Lord heal you, you should be rejoicing. Amen. And on today, sometimes people criticize and they say things. And as I can remember, a few years back, I went through two major crises, one right behind another. And when the Lord delivered me, when the Lord healed me, many occasions I'd be rejoicing. I come to church rejoicing. I can remember right here in Bridgewood, one day I was just rejoicing and the preacher said, look at Elbert, he don't have to have music to do, to do. But what thing about is saying, when the Lord do something for you, yeah. you don't have to have music, but the Lord do something for you, your hand can go wherever you are, and you can just praise God wherever you are, and you can tell of the goodness of Jesus. I continue to tell of the goodness of Jesus wherever I go. I went and visited in church, and one day I was at a visit in church, and so many were looking at me, and uh, as they looked at me, they began to laugh. But I don't care who laughed at me, but you know what the Lord has done for you. Beyond a shadow of doubt. Yes. You don't have to have music. You don't have to have everybody cheering you on. But God will let you know. I will continue to remember when God do something for you. Or when God do something special in someone else's life, don't be critical. Rejoice with those that rejoice. Amen.